Hi guys, in this video I'm going to continue developing the code for the snake game and what I'm going to look at is adding snake movement uh, using the directional buttons on the keyboard and actually moving the snake around on the screen. So I'm going to run the code uh, just to show where I got to last time. So I, I generated the snake array or snake list rather and I was able to draw it on the screen. So now I'm going to start adding the snake movement. The way to do that is I'm going to go into my event handler and I'm just going to add additional events that I'm going to look for. And the one that I'm looking for is when we press any key on the keyboard, which is key down. I'll say else if event type is pygame.keyDown. So if any key has been pressed, then we look at which key it is. So I'm going to be using my up, down, left and right keys. So I'll say if event.key is, uh, and this is kind of standard uh, Pygame code. So K, which is key, up. So if the up button has been pressed, then I want to define a direction for the snake. I'm going to choose uh, directions from 1, 2, 3, and 4. And in fact, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to define it first. I'll say direction equals 1. And I'll add a comment to say what they mean. Uh, 1 is up, 2 is right, 3 is down, 4 is left. And I'm going to use this and I'm going to correlate that to the keys as they come up. If we press the up key, direction oh, direction becomes 1. And now I can just copy this along. And I'll say now, if I press the down key, so replace this with down, then we go to 3. Uh, actually, I'm going to keep them in order. So I'll put uh, right up here, which is direction is 2. And at the end, I'll add left, which is direction equals 4. So that's going to give me positional or directional control using the up, right, down, and left keys. The one thing to add, though, is say, for example, direction is currently 1, meaning that the snake is moving up the way. If I was to press the down key, it would flip direction to 3, and the snake would suddenly start moving downwards, uh, and it would end up essentially moving through itself. And that's not something that we want to have. So I'm going to add an additional condition against each one of these. If event key is up and direction is not equal to 3, therefore I can press the up key as long as the snake isn't currently moving down the way. I can now copy this one, add that into down, and reverse it for 1. And then I'll add it into my left and right. So as long as we're not moving left when we press the right key, and when we're not moving right, when we press the left key. So that gives me some uh, better control over my direction. I'll run the code just to make sure there's no errors. Okay, that's fine. So it's not actually going to do anything. I can press all the buttons now, uh, but it's not giving me any errors. So that's a good check. Now that I've got this directional control added, I want to be able to actually convert that into a modification of the snake pause list, which is going to move my snake around. I'm going to come in and add that code just underneath there. And I'm going to do this in two stages. Initially, what I want to do is I'm going to ignore the head of the snake. And what I will do instead is I will move all the remaining segments forward by one. And the way to do that is I'm going to splice the original array and just move some of the items around. I'm going to say that snake pause, uh, which is going to be my updated uh, list, sorry, I keep referring to as an array, snake pause, uh, we take the last value and then we add snake pause, everything else essentially. And this is a little bit tricky to explain what's actually going on here, but essentially, um, like I said, I'm ignoring the position of the head for now. 
that doesn't really matter. I'm about to redefine that. I'm just taking each of the segments of the snake and I'm shifting along by one within this list. And it's just going to give the effect of moving the snake along by moving, say, segment three into the position of segment two and segment four into the position of segment three and so on, so on. Essentially, it just shifts everything up by one. And after I've done that, I can then look at positioning the head in wherever the new position is based on the direction. I'll start that with uh, the heading up. So that's determined by if direction is equal to one, therefore if the snake is moving up the way. So now what I'm going to do is draw the head in a position relative to the second segment. So if the direction is one, then that means that the head is going to be one unit or one grid above position two or segment two. That means that the X coordinate of the head is going to be the same as the X coordinate of the next segment along. I can then say that snake position at index point zero, which is the head and coordinate zero, which is X is the same as snake position at index one, which is the second segment at position zero, which is the X coordinate. Having done that, I just do the same for the Y position. I'll switch that to one and I'll switch this to one. But essentially I want to move this above the second segment. So that means that my Y coordinate is gonna decrease by the width of my grid, which is cell size. So this might be a little bit confusing uh, but when you kind of play around with the numbers, it eventually it does make sense. And now I just copy this for all the other directions. And here I am going to flip it to say three, uh, just because it makes it a little bit easier to arrange them. So I say plus one on the Y coordinate. And then I copy these down again for my left and right. So if I'm going two, which is to the right, then I flip these round because my Y coordinate now doesn't change. So it's my Y coordinate that stays the same and it's my X coordinate that does move. So if I'm going to the right, then I add a cell size. And finally, if I'm going left, again, the Y coordinate stays the same. The X coordinate changes and it's decreased by one grid width, which is cell size. So I'm going to run this just to see if there's any errors. Uh, it does run, but you notice there's no snake on the screen. Uh, the reason for this is because this iterates so quickly, it's essentially doing this constantly. And therefore, by the time I can even see the screen, the snake has already disappeared off in direction one. So it's, it's moved off the screen up the way. To address that, I'm going to add a little timer into this. I'm going to add a timer called update snake. If update snake is greater than 99, and I'll code this in first and I'll explain what's happening. Then update snake equals zero. And at the end of the code, I'll put it down here. Update snake increases by one. So what this is essentially doing is I'm starting with a value of zero, which I'll need to go and define up in my game variables, which are here. And it, it means that when it comes to this point, it's going to check if that value is above 99. So it starts off at zero, therefore it fails this test. It doesn't execute this code. And at the end of the loop, it updates that value by one. Eventually, when it's done this a hundred times, it reaches this condition, it executes all this code for redrawing the snake, and it also resets this value. So it's kind of like a makeshift timer within the game. Uh, I'll try running this again. And you can see now the snake does move 
uh, and you can actually see it. And again, there's no conditions on the boundaries, so it just runs off the screen. So I'll try running again, and I'll just see if the controls work this time. And there you go. I'm moving the snake around with the arrow keys. And if I try to press up, I can't. So I can't make the snake flip through itself, which is that condition that we added for checking which direction it's currently moving in. But you can see there's no boundary conditions. There's no exit conditions. So it, there is no game over the snake. I mean, it's too short right now to try and eat itself. But there's no end game to this. There's also no food, so there's no objective either. So adding in the food and adding a score counter, uh, and as well as that, adding some boundary conditions to where the snake can and can't go, uh, that's going to take a little bit longer still. So I'm going to do that in another video. So I'm going to wrap this one up now, uh, but hopefully that was useful, and thanks for watching.